Hey everybody, welcome back to the Skookum Report. I'm playing around with some new intro music here. And let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Today's Bigfoot encounter really talks about the fear that somebody experiences when they see a Bigfoot and, and encounter one and how it can stay with them for years and years and really uh, set off sort of like a PTSD. This gentleman uh, is from Georgia and he writes, Along the Flint River in the vicinity of the central Georgia city of Griffin is the location of one of Georgia's most publicized pieces of Sasquatch evidence, the cast of a track with dermal ridges that supposedly indicate the existence of an unknown primate. That 17 and a half inch print was cast in 1997 by a sheriff's deputy, but 20 years earlier and within a few miles of this place, a young teenager had a fleeting but frightening encounter with an animal that was out of this realm and it was out of anything that he considered uh, existed at all. Today, Jeff Scott is trying to come to terms with what he saw that day on the banks of the Flint River. He searches through the vast amount of Bigfoot information available on the internet and he returns to the location of his sighting. He's no longer embarrassed by the fact that he saw something that is cataloged by the general public as strange or fanciful. Jeff Scott's search for answers began in 2008, during the time of the Ballyhooed hoax in Georgia, when two men, one a certified police officer, claimed on national TV that they had the body of a Bigfoot. It was a lie, but Scott says what he saw was real. Back in 2008, when they said they had the corpse of a Bigfoot, and you all probably remember that hoax, he said, I went back down there. In July, during a telephone interview from his home in Griffin, said he is certain he has found strong evidence of the creature still in that area. Scott's personal sighting goes back more than three decades. Me and my cousin were down on a riverbank, he recalled. I was 17 years old when it happened, and I wasn't even thinking about Bigfoot back in those days. My cousin was down on the bank fishing, and I said, Hey, Russell, come on up here. Let's go around this bend and fish over here for a while. Now, he didn't come, but Lord knows I went up around that river bend and threw my pole out, and I was sitting there by myself. I wasn't talking, just being extremely quiet when I heard something way off in the distance across from me. The river is real narrow up there, too. As I sat fishing, the sound he heard far off in the forest sounded like limbs popping, and I started getting louder and louder, and I thought it must be a cow or something coming down to the river to get some water. It got closer and closer, and the fear came over me. I started hearing big, huge limbs, snapping and popping. It was frightening. I knew right off the bat, oh, there ain't nobody in the world can make sound like that or that kind of noise. Scott said he was alarmed and his sense of flight set in. But he sat still and he said the bushes and vines on the opposite side of the river were moving and he knew that whatever he had heard was near the river. About that time the thing came out. With its arms, it parted the vines, and I saw it walking. It was just humongous how big it was, solid black hair and shiny. I never saw its face. I saw it from the side. I saw its legs plain as day, its arms and head, everything from the side. Now, if I had hollered at it, it would have instinctively turned and looked at me. So I didn't do that. I was just so scared. He said, I got up and took off running back to my cousin. I had never been so scared in my life, never. Scott remembered he was in a near state of panic when he reached his cousin. He said, I was shaking so bad that my cousin tried to get me to my senses. I said, man, we need to get the hell out of here. Now they left and more than 30 years would pass before Scott had the desire to return to the location and stand where he had seen the creature. To this day, the only thing I regret about it is I was too scared to go back down there and see the devastation of the limbs that that thing had snapped. And I know the footprints would have been there. 
The sense of fear Scott experienced that day was profound. The fear overcame me that this thing could kill me. Mankind has never captured something like that, and the fear in me was just indescribable. Today, Scott does not harbor that same fear that overcame him as a teenager, and he doesn't believe these unknown creatures would kill unnecessarily. He's gone to spots on the Flint River on a number of occasions to look and listen. He said, I'm trying not to carry a gun down there with me, but it's hard. He said, I carry a can of bear spray and a knife, and I've only been back to the same spot where I saw it one time. He and his cousin returned at his request. I found the spot again right off the bat after 33 years, and when I stood at the exact same spot, now I'm being serious as a heart attack, I felt as if something was watching me. He said he turned to his cousin and they, as they stood on the riverbank, and he said, Russell, you didn't see what I saw standing over here 33 years ago. It was the scariest thing in my life. He said uh, he believes me because he saw the fear in my eyes that day. Scott said he talked about his sighting to only a few people. Nobody knows what I saw, only a handful of people, he said. And when he read about the casting of the footprint, now called the Elkins Creek Cast, and to him it was just confirmation that what he saw still roams those forests on the Flint River. Twenty years later, they took castings of a footprint, he said, and more than thirty years later, he wants to understand what it is that he saw. Man, that's amazing. I've never really heard a Bigfoot encounter talk about the fear as much as that one does. I've heard people describe it, but um, man, I guess it can just stay with you. And a lot of people describe it almost like a PTSD. Um, it just sets off like a panic attack and that's just crazy. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Um, if you or anybody that you know has had a Bigfoot sighting or an encounter and you want to have it on the show, just sh uh, write it down, shoot it off to me in an email at skookumreport at gmail.com. That's skookumreport at gmail.com. And I'll read it up here and have it on the channel for you guys. It's not a problem at all. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment. Say hi. I really enjoy talking to you guys. And um, let me know in the comments what you all think about that new Hulu three-part documentary called Sasquatch. I was really looking forward to watching that for a couple months. I mean, really couldn't wait to see it, uh, especially after seeing the previews a couple times. I mean, I, I think I looked forward to that more than any other documentary in the past, actually. And then I saw it, and I had never been let down so much in my life. I mean, it wasn't even about Bigfoot. Nothing to do with it. It was just like false advertising or something. But um, let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. I'll see you guys next time on the Skookum Report. And I think um, the next one I have a pretty, it's a pretty funny, it made me laugh anyway. But um, I'll see you again real soon. Y'all take care. God bless. Bye-bye.